Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Oh, shut your mouth. Here we are, once again. It's Sunday. This is how I know it's Sunday, Jeremy. I like the hands thing you do every time. The hoop, where... Do I can't do I I just can't I think I even did that when I was on the radio and that's <laughs> like the only person that saw it was Duncan. Touchdown! <laughs> Tampa Bay. You're gonna be hearing a lot of those this season, Jeremy. Let's hope um. not. Let's hope not. <laughs> anyway, should we start the, the, yes, the let's episode? Start. <laughs> yes. Um Hello, everybody. Uh watching now. It has started. I'll tell you what started. Your mouth, Eddie Stone, has already. It has begun. Uh, thanks very much, letting everybody watching know about that. But that was a visual thing, and you can listen to this later as a podcast if you want. So if you're listening later, watching later, or watching now, thank you very much for being with us here on Covidio Killed the Radio Star, episode six. Six man. Um, six weeks we've been doing this, and it's just got better and better. I think, Jeremy. I think so too. Yeah, I'm glad you agree. And um, we just had a, a an influx of comments of some people who are joining us, so I'm just going <laughs> to quickly throw them up. And Duff Valley, Duff Valley, I like Carl Longstale. <laughs> oi, oi, motherfuckers! That sets the tone, doesn't it? By the way, if you think this is a show for children, it isn't. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you have changed sides. Yeah, we have, we have. I think uh, Jeremy was desperately trying to put us the other way around again. He couldn't. Yeah, um, it's it might even be my nap this week because that was pretty annoying. <laughs> For people who have never watched this before, if this is your first time you've seen it, this is um, inspired slightly by the fact we're in lockdown and myself and Jeremy uh, decided we would put together a kind of little COVID show called COVID Video Killed the Radio Star uh, with various different sections. You'll get to know what they are as we go through them. We chop and change and shove stuff in uh, as we want. And if you're listening now and if you're watching on YouTube, you can comment. And if you comment, like these other guys commented, Jeremy in his wisdom might put your comment on the on, <laughs> on the screen or he might ignore you. I mean, I might so agree. that's up to you. If you want us to talk about something or if you want to provoke a comment live, that's the way to do it. Just comment on it and uh, we might make a... We might use it or not. That's how it works. We've got lots of bits of different pieces. We're on for about an hour, I think. Uh, so thanks very much for joining us. How are you doing, Jeremy? Because I haven't spoken to you since last week. Yeah, I'm good. It's uh, been a interesting week, but yeah, yeah, I've got a brand new laptop that is going to enhance this live stream Experience. podcast, whatever you want oh, to yeah. call it, going forward. Do you know what? I love new technology. I love buying new, fresh things. Um, some people like, uh, I don't know, baking trays or cool things made to bake and stuff like that. I like technology. I like technology. Who likes a baking tray, Alex? People do. I don't. I would never say that. I would never suggest that I bought myself a, 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 a you know, like a, a cookie tray maker or something like that, a brownie maker. I would never suggest I did something like that. But some people do like that sort of stuff. I like technology. I love technology. <laughs> bonjour. Everyone's getting involved in that. We've got oi oi motherfuckers and bonjour bitches. It's like we've stepped into the, the film Snatch. <laughs> in, in case the... The little banner across the bottom wasn't enough to remind yeah. people that this is a mature podcast, not for children. Don't bring your children to this podcast. Just don't. It'll be like that time I said before when the I was in Argos and the mother bought the, the eight-year-old child Grand Theft Auto 2 or 3 it was actually. It was uh, San Andreas. Is this the one you want? Yes, it is. You'll be killing a whore later. Um, and not a moment too soon. Um, but yes. It is not for those children. It is not for any children. It's for adults. So I'm glad that you're here. Although we do have some uh, some immature sections later on. In fact, the whole thing is immature. I think it's fair to say. So um, I questioned who enjoys a cookie tray or who would want a cookie tray. This is slightly different. Uh, and I, I can kind of relate to, to this. Duff Valley says, I just bought a Japanese tamagoyaki pan. Is that one of those things where you have to keep the little thing alive and a little kind of key ring? No, it's the uh, tam. Uh, I think he means takoyaki, which is uh, don't tell you, him what he thinks. <laughs> you put squid in batter and you put it over a, a heat. Oh, I just twatted my microphone. Apologies. And you put it over <laughs> the heat, and you have to keep turning it until it's just a nice like dumpling 
sized thing. Hey, people like a and solution for a thing. Listen, Duff Valley. Do you know this guy? I do. Okay, cool. Um, I love your name. Don't go changing. You put squid in whatever you want. Your mouth, other places, the bin, <laughs> whatever you want Aiden, to do. We're going off the rails here. I love it. That's the whole point of this. Do you want to get onto it? Let's open with a section we like to call Covidiot of the Week. There's Let's no sting for this. Let's. Uh, there will be. Now I've got a new laptop. If you Let's want to make one. I, see <laughs> if I can do in. this slickly. Right, so we're into Covidiot the... Covidiot of the Week. Okay, cool. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes, this is a result. Right. Okay. So, uh, my COVID of the week is really, <laughs> really fitting with this mature language and explicit content. If you are faint you of heart or or you don't <laughs> like anything in any way offensive, uh, please come back in five minutes. And <laughs> this entire segment <clears throat> so it said that life imitates art people say that but in this case i think it's more life art imitating life or <laughs> art imitating something really bizarre and right now i want to know so there's this post on facebook and i'll i'll read it out for the benefit of those listening on the podcast. It's titled The New Abnormal. Oh, that's very clever. Abnormal becoming that one. <laughs> Abnormal becoming the new normal. She blindly obeyed. Oh, Jesus. My new hashtag artivism, which Again. I assume is a, a tired portmanteau of activism and art. <laughs> <laughs> Since Two the last time so far. I was behind the camera with my super artivist sister. This is getting oh, better geez. and better. I don't know. What twin, Julianne. And then a lot of fucking emojis. You'll note there hasn't been a comma yet either, which really helped me understand this sentence. No one uses comma anymore, granddad. Get with the program. Carry on. If masks work, why the six feet? If six <laughs> feet works, why the masks? If both work... Why the lockdown? And perhaps we can address these questions after we, we see the images that are attached. Please share your thoughts about the meaning of these images. What are they representing for you? Okay, so note that in your in your head, Alex. I'd like to hear your, your thoughts on their meaning and what they're representing for you. Okay, yes. We would like to hear from all on you. Good, because you're fucking gonna. <laughs> now more than ever, we now must express ever. ourselves with the brilliance we were created to be. Oh man, who is this person? Hashtag so artivism. Emojis. Hashtag rise up. Hashtag end the lockdown. Rise up is the Bucks um, phrase. It's a Bucks hashtag. I'm on with it. I can rise up. End the lockdown. Yeah, cool. Carry on. <laughs> so, I know you're going to show me something. Here we go. This is The New Abnormal by Davida Sal. <laughs> Outside Trader Joe's. Uh, what the fuck is that? Is that just like a massive mask? That is a, holding, like, a bikini mask? comprised yeah. of masks. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, she has also <laughs> got a big scarf for some reason. It also looks like it's the same material. I'll give you rise up. Matt, you give me rise up every time I see you. Um, though notably not over her mouth. Does she not understand how masks work? I think I mean, that is the, earlier, the protest. Yeah, I think oh, that's what she's protest. talking about. Oh, it's a protest. Because she said if masks work... It gets work, uh, it be... better. <laughs> go, 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 please. I said click. It's clicking. Oh, she's... Oh, God, she's standing outside the place now. Look at these guys coming along with all their stuff. Um, mask, mask. And she's just standing there holding what? Some kitchen some, roll? It's some kitchen roll and it looks like a potted plant in a paper bag. <laughs> I want to know who she roped in to take these pictures. <laughs> Walking along. <laughs> oh my God. She's got it. Oh Honestly. Honestly. Is that... And, the, and that's it. <laughs> 
And that's it. Well, do you know what? Um, she says if masks work. Well, those masks do work at allowing us not to see parts of her body. Um, I, I don't think there are any words on that. I don't know how you found that. I think that's so funny. <laughs> but, but Alex, she, she wants to know what you think. How do you react? How does her protest of the lockdown and wearing masks make you feel? Well, you know, it's more um, activism than art. I'll go that far to say. I don't feel that she has really gone as far with the art that I would have liked to see. She's basically just made a bikini out of masks. She hasn't actually done any art. There is no art. It's just a protest. If she could have done something more interesting... What do you suppose her tattoos? I mean, hey, by the way, Eddie, I didn't even see a tattoo. Can we? I don't know if we can go back and have a look at that. Is there a tattoo on her? I don't know. I think she had a tattoo. There was. There was. I can barely see. Oh, oh there was. There see. is a tattoo right here. Hey, I have to say, I wasn't looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so tiny. Um, yeah, I don't know. My opinion is there's no art here. What I love is that she's like, if masks work, then why six feet? If six feet works, then why masks? And it's like, well, the point is they don't entirely work, much like, you know, there's a small amount of chance that, like, say, contraception wouldn't work, which is probably what resulted in you. Uh, so, you know, can't help <laughs> thinking that maybe... You it's called it's doubling like, down, you fucking ballad. <laughs> it's like you're trying to give yourself the best chance, but your premise is wrong. If you're, This is the classic straw man in action. You know, like just saying, like, if these work, then why not? I said, well, let me take issue with your first point and you can <laughs> shut the fuck up. That's what I think. That's what I think. I think the world is collapsing around our ears and this person isn't helping. What's your thoughts of it? Pete, actually, say, I was going to say you, but I mean, anyone can chip in here. Just chip in and say something. There must be someone with another opinion, like Eddie or Carl. <laughs> Fally says she wasn't even st- <laughs> she wasn't even standing six feet away from the shop doors. Hey, people no. were standing six feet away from six uh, six feet away from her. And this old guy, you know, he really loved it. The old guy was really into it. I've lost my. Mouse here. There we go. <laughs> this guy, man. He's looking though. He's like, he's like the fuck is this? <laughs> Like, why is she holding Damn. these things? It's just so. Have you it's seen like white she's people, kind of man. got them around her ankles as well? Like, she's yeah. wearing heels and she's kind of got them like leg warmers. I'm like, oh, maybe I take it back. It, I mean, and across her, her, across her eyes as well, as if to say, like, she's ignorant or that we're ignorant. Yeah, maybe I, maybe I misjudged this woman, Jeremy. Shut maybe up, Alex. <laughs> And that's COVID year of the week. That is our COVID Before we move week. on, yeah, it's just a, yeah, a, yeah. a comment I'd like to throw up and address just so that we are keeping people on board and understand. Uh, David World Toys says, can you tell what the show all about for us new ones then? This show right now that you are currently watching is called COVID Video Killed the Radio Star and it's basically our slow descent into madness as we are in lockdown. Yes. But there are other things you can watch within the Jez Show Network, um, which Jez will be more than happy to tell you about. Two Minute Warning, which you do with Matt. That's right, uh, yeah, is who is who is American also uh, in the comments there. And uh, I'm going to have to put up another comment shortly, uh, a American football-related one from Matt. Cool. Um, there's a there's wrestling also, one you do as well. That's right. There's also the main roster, which uh, talks about WWE Raw and SmackDown each week. Uh, and the retro roster, which talks about old school wrestling. That's so weird. if you like wrestling, American football, or all the nonsense that we talk about, which gets a bit crazy and stupid and things we found on the net, bit sci-fi, bit geeky, bit nerdy, you're probably going to like this. And if you just like my beautiful face, uh, or your beautiful face, I guess. so That works too. But that works too. We'll be here. So you called hashtag rise up the mantra of the Buccaneers. I'm pretty sure. And now, before you say, is it the Falcons? Because I'm pretty sure it, we say it as well. It's, it <laughs> is the Falcons. As soon as Falcons. as soon as Matt said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was right. Yeah, you're COVID right. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I think I've seen. I think we all say it at one point or another. Well, um, I have to have. A Were you with Falcons. with me at the the Falcons Lions game at Wembley a few years ago? Was I went that to the see other it. one I, that you went to. I wasn't with you, but I went. No, to No, but you were there. 
And you, so you were there for Samuel L. Jackson shouting, yes! rise up every three and a half seconds throughout yeah, honestly, the entire Yeah, that's why I remember it. I knew there was a reason. But I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that we also say it, but it's kind of like a little bit like um, oh, there's a lot of kind of um, we ready kind of stuff that the NFL kind of does that everyone kind of falls in line with. But you're right, it is a Falcons thing. And when I went to see Sam, when I went to see the Falcons play and Samuel Jackson kept popping up going, rise up! I just expected him to be just like, rise up, motherfuckers! And they're like, <laughs> Samuel, this is actually going out to Wembley and you can't say motherfuckers. It's like, what the fuck? So I can only presume that that was cut. Um but you might be right, Matt. I think you're wrong, and this is my show, so I'm saying that I'm right. So go fuck yourself. Um, uh, if you want to disagree with me on your show, feel free. Right. Um, <laughs> I think I'm right, and I want to email. I'm just going to check. No, I can't be able to do it now. I'll just tell you I'm right. Um, I will say you are wrong, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, no. It is definitely the Falcons. I think you're actually probably right, but like, I'm sure we've said it. They, keep sa- they said it the other day. Oh, well, that doesn't come up in my first Google search, so I'll just have to admit defeat. Right. Duff Valley says, go Giants. Hmm? Matt Ward Stop. says, fuck the Giants. <laughs> and then follows the insult with, join us on Two Minute Warning next week. Advertising every other show. Matt knows how right. to get viewers, obviously. Shall we move on to the next segment of this show that we are currently broadcasting right now? Yeah, can we? So what we're doing now is uh, inspired somewhat by a friend of ours, uh, Duncan, who does a kind of nursery rhyme thing for children. Um, Jeremy pointed out that there are a lot of nursery rhymes that don't make any fucking sense. And so I will read out a nursery rhyme and we will all discuss it. Uh, And I've got one here. I don't know if I have to do the whole thing, but would you like me to read the nursery rhyme that we've got? Yes, please. I have abridged it. Good, because I'm not going to read the whole thing. Right. Ready? Okay. Yes. I had to read it off the screen. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell down and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Four little... One bumped his head. Four little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell down and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. And then it proceeds through all the monkeys until there's one little monkey jumping on the bed. She fell down and bumped her head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, put those monkeys right to bed. Now, there's a lot of issues in this (laughs) nursery rhyme, Jeremy. Where would you like to start, Alex? Well, I mean, it says at the end, in the the final stanza, um, put those monkeys right to bed. And them being in bed or being in the bedroom in the first place, has been the problem the whole length of this poem. <laughs> like, I think this shows a lack of foresight from the Doctor. It's like, now where has the problem been happening? Well, Doctor, in the fucking bed. Hmm, send him to bed. <laughs> That's a bit like saying, like, hey, he's been on the Xbox all day. Send him to his room where his Xbox is. He has a shark bite, Doctor. Ah, oh, excellent. Throw him in the sea. <laughs> Take him to the Great Barrier Reef. Um, I think monkeys are dangerous. I think they're really dangerous. You've been on safari. You've been on like a safari park kind of ride around the safari bit. I have. Have you ever seen a monkey? Yes. Yeah. They're little shits. <laughs> Don't hold back. Tell us how you really feel. I will. Ed- Eddie tear- Stone says, put them to bed. That's playing <laughs> right into their hands. I know, right? That's what I'm saying. Eddie, hey, this guy gets it, right? So like... I don't understand. It says, Mama called the doctor. Now, I'm not saying that monkeys can't have a mother, but I think the doctor is a very kind of like at least real world human kind of experience. So does the mother have monkeys as children? Why not call a fucking vet? Why have you got... I just like Remember last time when we read the thing about... Um, I was going to say it. It ties in directly to Miss Polly had a dolly. Miss Polly had a dolly. The running theme six, six, across six. these nursery rhymes appears to be negligent doctors who have doctors. not got a clue what they're doing. I don't know. At a time like this in COVID, Jeremy, we cannot afford, even in nursery rhymes, to have incompetent doctors. No. Imagine the world we'd be living in if they, these doctors been running these things. I don't know. <laughs> Mama called the doctor. And the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, 
My arm hurts when I go like this. <laughs> well, don't do it then. Matt Ward says, didn't the doctor check them for COVID symptoms via the phone consultation? Well, I mean, that didn't come up, Matt, because like the issues at at diagnosis stage uh, was that the issue was that they were falling off the bed. It wasn't a disorientation based on uh, potential COVID symptoms. I don't believe that's one of the COVID symptoms. It was the fact that they were acting like dickheads and jumping on the bed. Just stop jumping on the bed. Our parents have always said, don't jump on the bed. You'll break the bed or you'll break yourself or both. I don't know. And the thing is, why didn't the mother kind of, after the first one, like, oh, crap, little Jimmy's fallen off and and bumped his head. Um, Maybe I should get the rest of the children away from the danger zone right now. Right. This has happened five times. Jimmy's a prick anyway. He probably had it coming. Let's just carry on, see how we get on. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Now Steve's fallen off too. Nah, fuck it. Let's keep going. Let's Let's see if all of them follow suit. Five times, Jeremy, five times um, it's happened. And um, also, so basically, they allowed it to continue to happen five times, repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly failing to prevent all this in- all these kind of like, injuries um, when they could have just prevented it as soon as they knew about it. Wise yep. words for us all. And maybe this government. So, you know, um, a lot to take from nursery rhyme time. I think we've got about as much as we can from it. Um but if you have a, a nursery rhyme you want us to unpack, send it in. We'll read it out. There are a lot of bollocks ones. <laughs> and we're it will read not them. be too difficult. <laughs> and Monkeys if you actually have a child and you would like them babysat for half an hour on a Monday and a Tuesday morning, then tune in to Duncan's Rhyme Time, youtube.com slash Duncan the Singer, and walk away from your children for half an hour. I know I do. <laughs> Let them jump on the bed with Duncan. Mm. No, Last question. A weirder than I wanted to. Duff Valley asks, why didn't the doctor just say fuck off after the second time? Hey, I know, right? Hippocratic oath, not what it's cracked up to be. So um, let's move on to a section uh, I like to call, and you also like to call, this is happening. Whee. <clears throat> no sting. So... Um, <laughs> Yeah. Do you want to write a sting? Feel free, send it in. Uh, this is happening, where we discuss things that are hap and things that are nap. And if you've never watched the show before, we'll talk about things that are happening, what's hap, what's cool, what's great, what's great, what's good. And things that are nap are things that are bad, that are uncool, are cold, as it were. Um, so we'll do both. Jeremy, mm. what's hap? So as I regularly do, I've spent... Uh, a portion of this week watching television because you know I don't have work or preparing for live streams or any of that important stuff to do right so sure 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 I'm gonna find some new tv shows to watch and this week I've been particularly impressed with tv shows that are based on books okay or are adapted from books okay one of them is uh brand new only dropped on Friday and the other mm-hmm. is uh, a little bit older, but still fairly current. I have been watching Good Omens, which is the ad- adaptation of the Terry Pratchett, Neil Gaiman novel. And the one I'm more excited about, because <laughs> as a, a former teacher and just general kind of teen fiction nerd for some reason, mm-hmm. uh, is Alex Ryder, based okay. on the, the series by Anthony Horowitz. Horowitz. <clears throat> I don't know. Well, I know Good Omens, obviously. Uh, I, we watched a little bit of it before. Um, but I'm quite intrigued. So what's Alex Ryder? Because so I've never heard of that. Alex Ryder is... Uh, he's a teenage boy, 14-ish years old, if they've kept it in line with the books. Mm-hmm. Um, he lives with his uncle. He believes his uncle to be a bank worker work just works in finance nothing particularly special until one day his uncle dies uh, Actually, i think i do know this i think i do know it. carry on and it it turns out that his uh uncle was actually a uh spy, spy? in the secret service yes <laughs> and so in the process of investigating what happened and not really the buying the fact uncle. that it was a, a a car accident in the books it's slightly different in the series um train he he investigates himself no it's actually completely different in in the uh 
in the new TV series because he ate some bad chicken. The f- the first book in the series uh, is Stormbreaker, but yeah. the the TV series actually starts with the second book, uh, Point Blank. So they've had to switch around the death a little bit and adapt <clears throat> for that. I don't now, know why don't they chose s- to do that, but. I don't want to spoil anything here, but does he become a spy? Is he like a teenage spy that also goes to school? So is he like a Spider-Man who's having to do spy shit, but then get his exams done? Is that the plot? Absolutely right, yeah. <laughs> Classic. Um, so have you watched all of this yet or like some of it or whatever? I'm three episodes in to uh-huh. its only season so far. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But and it's so far, are you able definitely, to tell me ha- Definitely hap. Ah, excellent. Um, well, go away and watch it. That's what I have to say. If you say it's happening. Okay, see you later then. Let's see you later. I'll tell you what I'll talk. <laughs> <clears throat> I wasn't a big fan of Good Omens, though. I have to say I wasn't so sure about that. But No, uh, and obviously the first episode we watched together, uh, it together was our attempt at, at watching something on Netflix while also live streaming each other and it yeah didn't work particularly well unfortunately <laughs> no it didn't um, I don't know if anybody else has tried this watching something with someone else but it's not really something that functions particularly well well myself and Isabeau watch stuff every week and we've actually managed to nail it quite quite well but like yeah we just want to watch stuff together and then sometimes we I mute myself so that she can't hear the feedback coming through or whatever like that and occasionally I unmute um <laughs> Eddie Stone says, "Spy, der man." Man, has, has he? Had you been holding that back, or has he been thinking about it that's, one for a that's while? That's just popped up. That's just cool. oh, okay, right, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we've been watching stuff. It's quite good. Um, uh, I'll tell you what we've been watching because this is in my hat. I don't know if it should be in my hat, but anyway, um, yeah, it doesn't really work. But one of the things that we watched, I this hap- wasn't here when I looked at the notes earlier, and I I have thoughts on this. So carry on. Okay, yeah, sure. Well, I'll take it in reverse order then, because the thing that I watched is Snowpiercer, which I believe is a film. I've never seen the film, but when I looked it up, it was like a film. And now Snowpiercer is a TV series, and it's on Netflix, and you can watch it if you have Netflix. And I like finding something that I can watch and she can watch um, is hard because the Belgian Netflix doesn't have the same thing as the English Netflix. You have to kind of first, you can find that. Once you've found those ones, which we can both watch, she has to like it. Um, and Snowpiercer is a kind of end of the world kind of story in that the world has had too many wars and too much shit and it's basically totally fucked and whether it was a nuclear winter or whatever has happened the place outside is um, pretty fucking cold and um, in fact it's go outside and freeze to death in like seconds kind of cold it's just so unbelievably icy it's not just a bit chilly Jeremy and so this guy this philanthropist has made a thousand car long train that basically has every class of society on it from the very upper class to the very lower class all the way through the train and then it just basically drives around the entire world forever holding only the remembrance of society on it and that is the conceit of Snowpiercer. Um, Jennifer Connelly's in it uh, who was the girl in Labyrinth um, and I believe she was in Two Moon Junction and then her career disappeared and resurfaced on Snowpiercer. And the detective is David Diggs, who was Lafayette in the original Broadway production of Ham- Hamilton. So there's lots of things to like uh, in there. But, <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Who wrote this script? It's so funny. Well, you actually caps to the theme here because Snowpiercer was a novel originally it is based from on a book yes get so, in well no done you've, you've bungled your way into uh <laughs> that's the way i like to do consistent. it i bungle into it Just bungle but, into it so it's on netflix here but actually it's on uh, a network called tnt in the states oh okay which is where i watch a wrestling show every week and okay. so i have seen snowpiercer advertised as coming soon since about mid-January. So let me say, I'm already fucking sick of Snowpiercer and I haven't <laughs> even watched an episode of it. And I just don't... I can't get on board with the premise of being on a fucking train that just drives around all the time. It just sounds utter 
bollocks to me, I'm afraid. It is. Um, I don't know. We will watch it because we're into it now and we're watching it. I have to say that the the whole thing, whole premise is around a murder and they've, they've recruited David Diggs, not for his singing and rapping prowess in Hamilton, but for his detective skills because his character's a detective. So the, th- the last class of Snowpiercer is the tail. These people who at the last gasp mm. before the train is about to leave all leapt onto the, t- the train like slight sort of stowaways. And some people made it and some people didn't and froze to death. This is their last gasp chance to like not die. And so for whatever reason, the tailies, they're called the tailies, right? Like, and then they go around going like, it's it, it's honestly, an inspired it, it, name. Oh, guys, I can't. It's just like the whole thing, the whole way it's written is so terrible. And it's just, they're all like, they're all like cockney kind of just like, well, yeah, us, life in the tail is pretty hard for that. It's much better up in first class. Yeah, well, they don't know how well we've got it. And it's a little bit kind of just like, and at one point, the, the le- uh, Jennifer Connelly's talking to these people in first class and they're all just sipping tea and drinking, like eating crumpets and shit. And With hats, like, I, probably. Slightly yeah, and tipped like, and roughs. It's a bit this like is that. just it's a not- Charles Dickens novel, Alex. This is, <laughs> they're not there's like just that, a they're- train involved. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it, it's basically a remake of Great Expectations. But they're sitting there. Shit and they're, Expectations. Like- <laughs> well said. They're eating and stuff like that and drinking their tea. And they're like, I heard there's been a rebellion back in the tale. You need to keep them in line. And and Jennifer Connelly goes, oh, that's just track talk. And I'm like, is that what we're called? Is it not everything has to be about the train. You don't just, just, just say that's gossip. You don't need to. That's just track talk. And it's like, oh, God, this fucking show. You're not um, selling it to me, Alex. I'll be honest. Well, that wasn't really. It is kind of fun. It's a bit confusing. And the whole plot is a little bit convoluted. And like someone's died, but why did they? Do? And they're kind of unpacking it. It's got the guy who's Kurt's dad from Glee in it, and a whole bunch oh, okay. of other people are also in other things. Um, Isabel's probably watching, and she'll want to watch more of it, and we will. But I have to say, probably nap. Don't know why I brought it up in hap. Watching TV's hap. Anyway, I've gone on too long. Snowpiercer, don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. Throw yourself out into the cold, everybody. Just throw your- <laughs> save yourself the bother. That's all I'm saying. Unless you like David Diggs. Oh. Oh. What one else more, is happening? for you? <laughs> yeah, go for it. I think you can probably start your hap and then segue into your, your nap quite nicely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, bit geeky. So if you're a geek and you're watching this thing, you'll like it. I bought a PlayStation 4 Pro. Okay, I bought a PS4 Pro. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been wanting one for ages, one a PS4 or something, and I bought a PS4 Pro. Now, the uh, eagle-eyed among you will notice that probably November, December, the PS5 is coming out. Why couldn't you wait, Alex? Why didn't you wait? I was going to say, the eagle-eyed uh, among you may notice that it's 2020 and not 2016. <laughs> and not 2016 when the PS4 Pro came out, I think, and not even like whenever this came out, like 2008 or whenever when the original PS4 came out. Yes, you're right, I am late to the party. I tried to get some amazing deals over the past few years on Black Friday, but nothing was forthcoming. And then recently, having a little bit more money because I'm not leaving the house, I've now got a bit of cash put away, cash that I probably won't have when the PS5 comes out because we'll be back into regular spending patterns and stuff like that. And I suppose I could put it away somewhere, but let's be serious. So I have the money now, and let's face it, I wanted it now, and I wanted to play some games now, and I wanted to play Dishonored 2 now, so I wasn't about to wait for it. Although I asked a friend of mine at work, I asked my friend Scott, I said, what do you think I should do? And she's like, he's like, I think you should wait. And I'm like, I think you're wrong, and then went out immediately and <laughs> bought it. That's how you know. That's how you know. Well, that is how you know, isn't it? Um, so I went and bought, bought a PlayStation 4 Pro, uh, mainly because the Pro thing is good for 4K and HDR and I've got a beautiful TV. And oh my God, the best decision I made in such a long time. It came with Final Fantasy VII, right? I bought it and it's and Argos just went, hey, do you want a free game? Do you like play, Do you like Final Fantasy VII, the remake? And I went, yeah, all right, I'll have that for free. Oh, what a fucking game. That game is stunning. What a game. My life is, oh, it's amazing. So I like this. Although I did have a kind of hang, that's, so that's what's hap, the PlayStation, right? But part of me is thinking I should have bought a PlayStation 5. So I looked into some of the bits about the PlayStation 5 to see if it was the kind of thing that I would buy. Let's face it, I'm not an early adopter and I'll never buy one when it's coming out. So even if see I See you in buy 2027. 
Yeah, I, you know I'm not an early adopter. I just bought a PlayStation 4 to, like this week. So I won't be getting it this year. And there's another reason I don't want to get it. Now, let me tell you something. I'll tell you what's nap is the fucking Xbox. I can't stand an Xbox. I can't stand about everything. I mean, this feels like it's don't get me started. But to quickly wrap it up, if I can, it's just a bad, uh, you know, just like the 360, they all just broke. I don't trust them at all. Their controllers are too big and boxy. They're horrible things, really horrible, big, chunky things. Not like the lean, beautiful, sexy look of the PlayStation 1 controller or the PlayStation 2 controller, the 3 controller, the 4, the dual sense of that. Uh, DualShock is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Let's take a look and see if you can spot what the PlayStation 5 controller reminds you of, bearing in mind how much I hate Xboxes. That's the PlayStation 5 controller. Wow, what happened to this? It doesn't look like any of the previous iterations of the PlayStation at all. It just looks like a big, fat, chunky controller. Something like, can we have the next slide, please? The, uh, something like, uh, <laughs> The Xbox controller. What the fuck is going on? That's why I don't want a PS5, Jeremy. I have to have a monstrosity. I mean, Switch. You can you can fuck off as well because you did exactly the same thing. It's like everybody just wants to be like Mike, right? If Mike were an Xbox controller. So I tell you what, that's what's nap. The PS5 controller and it can fuck off. And I'll see it in six years time anyway. When maybe a third party company has made me a beautiful controller. That is what's happening. That is what's nap. I reckon you'll probably be able to use the PS4 controllers on the PS5 anyway. Oh, well, maybe I... Yeah, cool. Maybe I'll buy one then. Have you actually seen some of the slick things that the PS5 controller actually does, though? No, 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 no. Actually, I just started to look into it, but I couldn't get away from looking at that stupid fucking controller. I just couldn't... I couldn't get into it. I couldn't think... There's all these... You can do wonderful things. It doesn't suck me off, but even if it did, I'd be like, oh, it's like an Xbox sucking me off instead of a PlayStation <laughs> sucking me off. I don't like, think I'd enjoy that. No, do you, are you going to tell me what it can do? I'm not. You're going to go away and look at it, and uh, then... Don't make me go. It's going to be Hap next week. Okay, sure, sure, sure. I sure, guarantee sure. you. Maybe, maybe. It won't be. I feel like I. it won't be. Um, if you have an opinion about these sort of things, just tell us what it is, and I'll disagree with you or agree with you. I don't know. If it's my opinion, I'll agree, and if it's not, I won't. That's how it works. Um, Before we move on, a quick fire. One word, Hap or Nap. Eddie Stone asks, is taking a nap hap or nap? Oh, it's hap. It's most definitely hap, Eddie. No, it's a, no, taking, a hap, no it, taking a nap is hap. Thanks for chipping in there. I like it. Nice little bit of rhyme time. Hmm. So um, on the back of you getting into a little bit of a ranty mood then, shall we move on to, I think, what is my favourite segment of <laughs> mine Don't Get Me Started. Okay. Don't get me like started. To explain what don't get me started is for anybody who's tuning in for the first time. Would I like to? Yes, I will. Or what the cool kids are now calling DGMS. Um, uh, don't get me started is where we both give each other a subject and the other person has to rant about it and explain why they're angry about the subject. Prefixed by don't get me started about the subject. And you can't say positive things about it. You have to find a way to get to angry it. about it to hate it you've got to hate on it um so we will we don't know what we're going to do and we're just going to tell the other person what the subject is and that's how don't get me uh, ggms works Dgums. hashtag dgms uh, hashtag dgms uh do you want to get started DGMS. dgms sounds like a school <laughs> says eddie stone D dgms dgms um, the Dover Grammar Middle School, if such a thing existed, except I think they just have like the entire school all the way through, so it doesn't work. Um, DGMS, do you want me to give you a subject? Go for it. I will not get started or do or don't. I don't understand. Carry on. Now that I think about it, this might be a lot easier, but I want you to do it because it's going to be amusing for me later on. So what do you think about, and you can interpret this however you want, as always, as always, uh, what do you think about cats? Okay. <clears throat> Don't get me started on cats. <laughs> Mainly because I own two of them. And I was lulled into this false 
kind of sense of security of get a cat they said it'll be lovely they said they'll sit on your lap and you'll stroke them and it's therapeutic and they purr and you get all the happiness from them but no motherfucker (laughs) as i uh this topic actually came up on on the main roster this week because really earlier in the week uh, it's been a, a tough week with, with my daughter and she hasn't been sleeping particularly well. But on two particular mornings, she decided to sleep in until 7 o'clock. Which, wow. Which for everyone else is like midday. Okay. <laughs> so this was an opportunity to get some well-deserved sleep that I haven't had for the last two and a half years. But at 4.30 in the morning... Cat number one decided it was a wonderful opportunity to get his horn on and start humping something at the top (laughs) of his volume and wake me up. And I'm the kind of guy that if I'm woken up after I've had a period of sleep, then I don't go back, don't get back to sleep for quite some time. So I was awake because of horn dog cat. cats. And then just as I'm starting to drift off, about an hour later, it's taken me an hour to be in a position to drift off again. From the corridor, from cat number two, I hear... (laughs) As she just vomits all over the hallway. Oh my god. So genuinely, don't get me started on cats. (laughs) Don't get a cat. Don't get a cat. It's all lies. Isabeau, I know you're listening. (laughs) Don't get a cat. (laughs) There you go. Well, thanks very much for that uh, honest opinion. Honest and unprompted opinion. uh, Though uh, some might say uh, orchestrated. Um, I'm going to take a a sip of wine. and um, You're going to need it. So you may remember last week that... uh, we covered a number of topics, um, and one of which I may have made a note of. So I would like you oh, no. to tell me what you think of John Cena. John Cena? Oh, my God. Don't get me started on John Cena. I mean, I don't know if everyone's up to date with who John Cena is. He's a wrestler in the WWE. I say wrestler. Do you remember when John Cena joined in and like he was like... He was part of a stable, I don't know if it's just him or other people, called the Chain Gang. And it was the lamest, most terrible suggestion for a character since someone suggested that Stone Cold Steve Austin should be Icy McFreeze. All right? It was such a terrible thing. And he came out and he had a chain. And he's so terrible. And then apparently, here's how it worked, right? What's amazing is that then he came out and started doing these raps. But they weren't really raps because they weren't freestyle. They were just ponderous poems that he had learnt, right? So he would just say these terrible poems. And like this was apparently because on one of the um, journeys back and forth, apparently Stephanie McMahon had heard him rap, but she hadn't heard him rap because he can't rap, right? So they got him on TV rapping and the whole world thought that's not a fucking rap. And from some way, this springboarded him to be one of the greatest and most terrible wrestlers in the entire WWE. He's an awful, awful wrestler with a a small amount of moves, just as bad as someone like Triple H, who's another awful wrestler with a small amount of moves, and also championed by Stephanie McMahon, right? And the other thing about him is just all his moves are terrible, but somehow, somehow he's untouchable. He's like Mark Henry. They They won't never get rid of him. And what's worse is that he's just held up as this pinnacle of people that everyone should be like. Which they shouldn't, because he's so unbelievably basic. He's basic. It's terrible. It's not even interesting wrestling. And they try to make him interesting. And the best thing that could have ever happened to John Cena, whilst whole fucking arenas were booing him, the best thing that could have happened is if he'd have been turned heel. But just with the absolute arrogance of Cena, of Triple H, of Vince McMahon, they refused to do so. He is fucking shit. And don't get me started on John Cena. Was that enough for you? I'm I'm good with that, man. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I like it when you give me things I know about. Don't ask, don't get me started on something I don't know about. Well, was I that wanted... the the John you were expecting? No, I don't know what you were going to say when you said John. I I don't know where you were going to go. What you, what you thought I was going to think you were saying? I can't remember from last week. John, I can't think. Um, 
the wine has addled my brain. Would you like another in, one? In the, in the comments, I'm sure uh, Eddie Stone can chime in and uh, remind you of the John whom perhaps... Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, I forgot! I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. Yeah, it was going to be... Oh, John Delancey. Yeah. I'm so glad you didn't say John Delancey. I love John Delancey. <laughs> But I don't like John. I mean, John Cena's. I don't want. I don't want to spoil that segment. John Cena's a dick. He's shit. Don't bother. I'm not an eight year old kid. I don't care about John Cena. Um, okay, okay now, Alex, hit me up. I will hit. Let's you. have another one. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit you hard because, like, the first time we did this in the first week, I think we inadvertently kind of got into a kind of a SmackDown kind of thing, was we went back and forth picking things for each other. Because I picked Chicago Bears and that stupid Spinny Bell. Fucking yeah. Just I know. There's no part of this that isn't shit. Right, um, absolutely right. Actually, you know, kind of bling's kind of cool. But like, don't get distracted. You're right. Um, yeah, we inadvertently got into a bit of a fight. Whereas I think I said mince pies. I said Chicago Bears at one point, and then I said mince pies, which you love, and forced you to do that. And then you picked Hamilton for me, um, and I don't think I meant to get into it. I really don't think I meant to get into it. But we're in it now. What's your opinion of Power Rangers? <laughs> you're such a prick. <laughs> <clears throat> don't get me started on power rangers I've got just to hear this. just from the first instance it's not even an original show it's just footage yoinked from japan that we decided to i say we it wasn't even us it was the freaking americans <laughs> who just decided to take anything that was cool uh from japan and put their dickhead actors in high schoolers who weren't even high schoolers David Jost was like 40 years old when they were filming Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and he had to pass as a nerd teenager no thanks <laughs> so we've taken everything that was cool about the original Japanese show Super Sentai filled in these douchebag teenagers they decided that they would add in these two extra characters who were supposed to be the bullies but the Power Rangers has ended up bullying him bullying them <laughs> for the majority of the show they got so far through it that they ran out of Japanese footage so they just <laughs> grabbed the same footage again and just put in new acting around it and it was completely <laughs> tired and irrelevant and now now, uh, not that I'm an authority on it or anything but no. it's the only fucking series that people in that fandom talk about there have been 23 other years of power rangers since the original <laughs> and now all they still talk about is the original is mighty original. Morphin power rangers as if nothing else has happened since then and we're all stuck in 1993 what a wonderful time to be alive i was i did get you started seven eight. <laughs> a good time to watch power rangers <laughs> Um, at the risk of wanting you to say something about me, do you want to move on, or do you have another one for me, or do you want to? I do have one more for you. Okay. Okay. And I came and I came up with it on our pre-show production meeting. Oh no, that sounds so, like it's so, clever. <laughs> so it may give you an idea of where we're going, and I would like to know, Alex, how do you feel? about Pepsi Max Cherry. Oh my god, don't get me started on Pepsi Max Cherry. I like I mean, it, it's just like the bottom line is Pepsi Max Cherry is trying so hard, obviously. There it is. There's 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 what it is. It's trying so hard to be Cherry Coke, trying to imitate uh Cherry Coke, but it fails at every level. Like Pepsi Max is a really nice drink and they were and I should say, I can extend extend this to all types of things where they add it. They do Pepsi Max uh, raspberry and Pepsi Max strawberry. Here's a news flash for you, Pepsi. You can't just add fruit to shit and make it work. It doesn't fucking work. Strawberry's disgusting, raspberry's disgusting, but fucking cherry. It doesn't even taste like cherry. And do you know what? I am the biggest fan of cherry flavoured things. But somehow, somehow Pepsi Max manages to make it not really taste like cherry. I don't know what it is about it. And by the way, every time I go to the supermarket, it's always on £1.50. It's not £1, Jeremy. They're just trying to get me for that COVID dollar. Do you know what I mean? They know that I'm sucked in. They know that I'm going to go and buy it. But every time I get it, £1.50 or £1.90. I mean, possibly that's more on Sainsbury's than it is on Pepsi. But I think they're in on, in on it together frankly. Everything else around you is a pound. Everything else I want to buy, Cherry Coke is a pound. Everything else is like £1.50. Fuck. 
But no, it isn't. It isn't better than Cherry Coke. Cherry Coke, you just don't even, like, don't get me started. Cherry Coke is absolutely perfect. It's the perfect mix. That's the problem with Pepsi Max. It haven't really blended it. It's too much of the Coke and not enough of the Cherry. Cherry Coke, now Cherry Coke, there's a vintage. There's a drink. That's one for the ages. <laughs> That's a fizzy drink you can take to the bank. I'm telling you, all the way. Absolutely. There's no contest. Night and day. <clears throat> Shut up. Done. Drop the mic. That's it. In fact, I will put my foot through my Cherry Max that I've got, like this, fucking horrible, I won't be drinking this again, don't even know why, why I liked it, what an idiot I was, I'm going to take this, and my John Cena DVDs, chuck them in the fucking sea, no, <laughs> cheers, yeah, cheers, I'll just sup on some, some Cherry Pepsi Max, <laughs> more for you motherfucker, well, it's not like anything else was available at Lidl today when I went. <laughs> um, so that's a segment we like to call Don't Get Me Started. Um, it's a very ranty show full of interesting, um, geeky shit. Um. <laughs> Eddie Stoner, should Alex get started on the PS4 controller? Not, not right now, he won't. But you know what? <laughs> I mean, I barely had it, so I don't really know what to say about it. Can't think of <laughs> if you were to get me started on the PlayStation 4 controller. Give me another week with it. Give me another week with it. Like, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what I think about it. Like plastic. Fucking plastic. Fucking plastic. Fucking really Fucking handy. It does everything I want it to. <laughs> Controls my people on the screen. Dual shock. Classic kind of stuff. Your fingers out. It has a little thing at the back to put your let your fingers rest on it. Fucking arrogance of the PlayStation makers. Sony. Uh, Dual shock my ass. It hasn't shocked Dual me shock. once. No. <laughs> Not even twice. <laughs> and it, then they have the audacity to add a little handy um, headphone jack into it so you can talk to people. I don't want to talk to people. That was literally the point of getting PlayStation in the first place, not to talk to people. Don't make it easy for me to connect. Do you know what else is really fucking handy that's a real fucking ball ache? Is if you want to be quiet and you're watching Netflix through your PS4, you can actually have the audio rather than through your TV, through your headphones, through the controller. <laughs> How fucking convenient is that, the pricks? It's too convenient, too convenient. Fuck it, don't like it at all. Don't even know. Also, it even has the sexy <laughs> shape of every single one before it that I liked. Have some innovation, pricks! <laughs> Fuck yeah, now. People don't want the same, they want change. Has no one it, learnt this yet? If it ain't broke, fix it anyway. Break it, and then <laughs> fix it. If it ain't broke, just break it relentlessly. I'm going to break my controller in a minute. I'm going to pour cherry Pepsi on it. Stamp it into the ground. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to kind of like, you can't see me, and I'm going to drop onto it. Yeah. Bam. That's why I'm going to go to my, my cherry max-ridden controller. Fuck it all. Fuck Final Fantasy. <sighs> I think we should go. I think we should go too. Yeah. Thanks very I'd... much for watching today, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is kind of what the show does. Um... Ranty bullshit about sci-fi, geeky, wrestling, nonsense and stuff that you fucking say. If they want to watch this again, Jeremy, or for the first time, how do they do that? Is that a thing? Yeah, so if you uh, if you are here watching it already, you'll already know. But as soon as the stream is over, it will be saved there for all of time and you can watch it whenever you like. If this was your first episode... You uh, can also go back and watch the other five episodes. Yes! I uh, ha have to say that I think last week's episode was a standout and is probably the best one that we have done. So uh, if you could only watch one, go back and watch uh, episode five. <laughs> and if you can only watch two, watch the episode twice. Or perhaps listen to this space if that takes your fancy. If you want this as a podcast instead for your commute or when you go to the gym or there's no gyms open so fuck you hey but in the future jeremy someone in might have discovered this in the future in the future this might be 2021 and people don't know what lockdown is they'll be like in the year about? 3000 <laughs> hey yeah busted should have fucking told us about this shit not fucking all the not like underwater cars man where were you on that one fucking busted pricks okay i'm gonna say goodbye thanks very much for joining us goodbye until next week see you later waving <laughs>